So what I want to talk about today is prefabs and what a prefab is in Unity and, and what its advantages uh, are and how that kind of can help us and specifically related to the health packs that we're building uh, for our video games, but they can be used for anything. We're going to use them again for our enemies because we're going to have, you guys are just going to have one enemy that's the same enemy basically and all that sort of stuff. Um, but anyway, so a prefab is essentially a, a, a container. It's a container in the fact that it holds the uh, Blender object but allows you to add and control um, components and other stuff that happens on that prefab and apply them across multiple prefabs or you can have, well, multiple instances of the same prefab, I should say, or you can have a prefab that's very different. So let's talk about how to create one, and then we'll throw a couple out here in the uh, scene, and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So I'm going to take uh, just in the, my folder, so I've got a folder here for the health packs, or health box as I called it, and I've got two, I've got a, a, a syringe here, um, it doesn't seem to have, yeah, it's got that in it, but anyway. So I've got this syringe that I built in, in uh, Blender. This is one health unit, and then I've got this uh, stupid box. And I actually don't like the box at all, um, but I've got this kind of health box that I built, okay? Um, um, H for health, maybe H for hospital, I don't know. Anyway, so... Um, I've got that, and I've got the UV exports here, and I, I've got all this stuff going on. So what I'm going to do, and I've already created a health pack prefab. In fact, you can see one right there, but we're just going to pretend like that doesn't exist, and we're going to start from scratch. So you right-click anywhere out in the empty space in your folder, and you want it to be, I, I prefer to keep them in the same folder as the Blender objects. It just makes sense to me. Um, I suppose you could have a folder that's just all prefabs and drag and drop there, but you'll have to drag the Blender objects into the prefab, and so it's just easier to do that in the same folder. So I right-click, and I'm going to create a new prefab. So right like that, create a prefab, and it's just going to have an empty, empty prefab, and first it asks you to name it. So I'm going to say health pack, and we'll call it version 2, uh, because this is the second one. Uh, so I've got this other one. Now I'm going to take my Blender object, and I'm just going to drop that in there, and you can see how the health pack is now has the Blender object. And basically, if you click on it, you can see up here, uh, you can attach animations to it. Uh, it's got a mesh renderer, uh, which, you know, you, have, you control all sorts of stuff here, including whether it gives shadows, receives shadows, all sorts of crazy stuff. And then here, the cube is the mesh uh, filter, and the cube is basically what the mesh is that is attached to this prefab. So now I'm just going to take the prefab, I'm going to drop it right here on the terrain, and you can see that it's, it's really large. Now, if I take the prefab, this prefab, and let's say I decide to take it down to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Okay. And then if I take my prefab again, let's go this way, health pack number two again, and I drop it out, what's interesting is you'll notice that the prefab that I just dragged out is now the same size as it was originally. Unless, let's undo that, I take the prefab and I hit apply. Now hold on, before I do that, I can click on the prefab in the folder and you can see the scale says one, one, and one. But if I take my prefab and then I hit the apply button, then I go back and click on the prefab in the folder, you can see that the scale has now changed. So it took whatever changes I made to the prefab that was in the scene and it applied it to the prefab that was in uh, the folder. So this is actually a really important relationship to understand about prefabs. Once you take a prefab and you drag the instance out, you can change it if you want. So I can go 1.5, 1.5, you know, 1.5. And if I don't hit apply, this prefab can exist with these settings all on its own. But as soon as I hit apply, Watch what happens. This one gets bigger, and the prefab that's inside the folder gets bigger. Now, I can click on this prefab and go back to 0.5. Uh-oh. Okay, just like that. 
And it doesn't do anything until I hit apply. Or, let me just undo that for a second, I can go back to the health pack here, and if I use the prefab that's in the folder and I change things, you'll see that they both change immediately. So the prefab that's in the folder, okay, in your, in your project, will control all the prefabs no matter what. But once you've laid this out, if you want one prefab to be a little bigger or a little smaller, you can do that. We can also do some interesting things. I'm going to lift these up off the ground here just so that we can kind of see them. Uh, and then we're going to add a rigid body to them. Okay, so right now if I hit play, they're just going to be floating right there in midair. Okay, yeah, my guy's not working yet. He just kind of stands there and then he starts walking for no reason whatsoever. We'll deal with that later. Um, <clears throat> if, however, I take and I add, let's say, to this prefab here, if I add a rigid body to the physics, okay, now if I click on both of these, you'll see the rigid body all of a sudden appeared. And now if I click on that, they fall, and they fall straight through the terrain. Why do they fall straight through the terrain? What are they missing? A collider. So if I take this, and I add the component of a box collider, you can kind of see the collider take over here. Let's go back and play. Now that one's going to sit there and stay, whereas the other one's not going to. If, however, I hit apply, and then I select this health pack, you can see now it also has a box collider. And again, if I hit play, they both will drop and stay on the terrain. I can then try to modify things. Let's go and let's remove our box collider. And let's add a mesh collider. OK, check convex. And then you can see how it conforms to the mesh of the object as opposed to this one is just a pure box. You might like how this works better in, amongst the world uh, you know, when it's doing you know, rolling or, or whatever. So mesh colliders can be very handy. And you can see how it kind of like flopped a little bit more. Um, it's always kind of fun. I always like making the, the physical, uh, I always like making it rubber. Or, or, or actually, you can even go bouncy. But I, rubber is always kind of fun. So it'll just do it. You see how it bounced? That was pretty cool. And the other one just settled. But then if I hit apply, now they'll both bounce because I have applied that collider and that material across all the prefabs. Does that make sense? Now, this exists also with code. So what we're going to do is when we write our code for our health pack, it's going to give our player so many points and so on and so forth. We will attach that, or that code as a component to the prefab. And what's neat about that is I can attach that, and then I can set all the prefabs to have the same value, unless there's one that I don't want to have the same value. And so I could select one particular prefab, and I could set, the, let's say, the value. Let's say it's, it gives 25 health points. But this one in particular gives 40, right? I can do that, and then that prefab will stay individual, individually 40 health points, unless I hit apply. And then it will copy the 40 health points all ac across all the health packs. Or if I go and I change the health pack prefab that's in the folder, then it would override whatever I did for the one that was out in the scene. So for instance, if I go in here, and I take my um, material, and I go to Bouncy, you'll notice now that I, if I click on these prefabs out in the scene, they have been changed to Bouncy. So the prefab that's in the folder is basically like, it's like a child-parent relationship. Whatever happens to the prefab here gets copied all the way across all of the objects. However, you can alter individual prefabs in, in the scene, and as long as you don't hit, hit apply, those individual settings will stay individual. That's kind of fun. Oh, they are really bouncing. It's still just going. And it hit me. It hit the character and kind of moved. But they're still rolling. So bouncy is no good. So now I, if I take this one and I set it back to 
rubber. I think I've illustrated this enough, right? But just to see a good illustration of a boom, it bounces and it settles, whereas the other one just keeps on going. Now, it'll be really interesting to see how this one responds with a different collider. So here, I'll keep it bouncy. Let's get, we're going to get, well, we'll get rid of our uh, mesh collider and we'll go to a box collider. <coughs> take our physical material to bouncy and see how it responds differently because now it's just got square edges. Almost a little bit more severe, if anything, but not all that much different. And then I could just hit apply and now you notice they all have cube colliders, box colliders. Does this make sense about how these are working? So what you're going to do is, y you do whenever you're doing something like a health pack or something that's going to be repeatable, so like, like an ammo uh, pack, like you know a clip for ammo for a weapon or anything like that, um, you 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 want a prefab, okay? You want a prefab, and that prefab can um, can help you just distribute them all amongst your scene very easily. Uh, and allow you to make alterations when you drop them in your scene, size-wise, adding components, whatever. The prefabs are really fantastic. The only thing that really hurts people is when they don't understand the hierarchy of how it works, okay? That this is the main controller, and if you make any changes in the folder, it changes everything. Uh, but once they're in the scene, you can make individual changes, and as long as you don't hit apply, that prefab can have its own, you know, set of settings. Um, and that's really the only trick with prefabs. Other than that, they're s fantastic and they're so easy to use. I think that you guys will you'll love them and they're, and they're really necessity if you're going to have a, a, a bunch of objects that are the same. Uh, it's really important to have, have that all set up. Okie dokie. Artichokey.